Hello there, friends. Angry Ragtimer here. And uh, today we're going to be showing off a brand new mod that was just publicly released by Greninja. And it is the CNIM 440. And this thing is kind of funky, but also really cool. All right, so first off, on the front number plate, it's, I think it's supposed to say, like, the road name of the railroad. It's not quite there on this because I just have it saying Suffer and Southern. If I change it, though, if I do that, there it goes. So it has, like, the road name, essentially, on the front number plate. And then it actually has, uh, on the headlight, the actual road number. And, uh, you know, Wall Street's valve gear, all good with that. Uh, decent looking 440, but then the tender, this is apparently the way that it had it set up. It has the, the road name and then the number. And apparently with this mod, you could change the road name like this, but it always has this part in white. I guess this is how the real thing did or whatever they at least did in the mod. Uh, so it's a little strange. Uh, otherwise decent 440, uh, if we take a quick look at it. 60 tons, uh, 18,000 pounds of tractive effort, I believe. Uh, 440 design. Looks like they've got a lot of good stuff modeled in offhand with this. And uh, maybe not get uh, blown away by steam there. But it's definitely a little funky. So I figured today we would just do a quick run with it, see how the thing actually works, and uh, go from there. Again, there's a lot of Good modeling on here. So thank you to Greninja for, for doing this. I know there's a lot of new locomotives coming soon to Railroader. So, yeah, definitely cool to uh, to check out and see. So with that said, let's go ahead and get going. The back head, I think, is probably my favorite thing about this locomotive because it actually <laughs> kind of resembles a real one. It's not just, uh, you know, Bluetooth brake stands. It actually has the independent and the actual train air. Uh, modeled well. Obviously, the reverser looks good. Injectors. Uh, you have your your pressure gauge right there. Um, your your brakes back there. And I uh, wish we could put like a little lamp or oil can or something here. The fire still has the usual fire. Actually, that fire texture looks new. It looks better. So that's cool. Uh, for the fireman's side, obviously... Things look good. Doors can open. Injector looks good. It actually has a sight glass. Yeah, it doesn't really model anything correctly in game, but hey, it's there. Uh, and it does have the sight glass light, which is kind of cool. And it works! So if we're running at night, you could actually have that um, little hatch up top to to do that. But otherwise, looks like a decent uh, backhead model, so that's good. Tender itself uh, has an interesting cold load texture. I think it's new. Obviously, we got the hatch with water, and that water temperature, I don't know if that's updated in game or whether that's a new texture, but that looks good, too. Uh, so, yeah, this is the basic rundown of the locomotive. Let's actually pull a little freight train and see uh, see how we go. I've got a uh, an interesting whistle on it today. I've got the Ashton 3 chime from uh, Mount Rainier Scenic 70. I think I've been using this one on another locomotive in game, but... Uh, yeah, let's see. So cylinder cocks doing their thing. I don't know whether this locomotive is intended to be a freight locomotive or a passenger locomotive. So let me know in the comments below if I'm about to a blast fever. Uh, because what we're going to do is we're going to take a cut of cars over to uh, to Birdtown. Uh, we're not going to switch it out today, but we're just going to do a quick uh, show of how this thing could pull. Because I'm just genuinely curious. Uh, so this thing's just a little baby locomotive compared to some of the bigger ones that are being teased. Uh, as of the date of this recording, uh, they actually had a tease a couple of days ago in the WNCRR about the H6 that's coming. Um, and apparently with some other stuff on the way too. So that'll be interesting to see. So we're going to couple up to a few cuts of cars here and just uh, get this taken care of. We'll go ahead and back in slowly. Come on. Yep. 
We've got our uh, C55 here from one of the past streams, just kind of waiting. Let's take a quick look, get the handbrakes off, get coupled up. Alrighty, get that turned off. We're going to go ahead and shove back to the next cut. I am genuinely curious how much this thing can haul. Because I'm assuming it's only 18,000 pounds of tractive effort, but uh, we have a mostly flat run or slightly downhill to Birdtown. So we'll see what we can get here. Okay, a couple more hoppers on here. Let's get the next cut, and then maybe we'll get one more cut after this. So we'll have a decently run train. All right, nice and gentle here. Okay, get that handbrake off, and yeah, we'll get the legs cut. And it is nice now that we have a whole bunch of new modded cars in here. Not just necessarily modded, but for the new industries. So we got a lot of stuff that all is going to Birdtown. So green cars, Birdtown Iron Mine. Uh, yeah, we'll get this next cut and we'll leave the rest here. Well, should we go more? You know what? L let's, um... How many more of these? Yeah, we only have a few more hoppers, so let's take them all. Let's take them all. Let's actually make this locomotive work. Or maybe it won't work. We'll see what uh, what happens here. But uh, we'll go ahead, get all coupled up, and then take a quick jaunt down the line. Okay. And one more set. This thing is starting to work a bit more. And now that we have a thousand tons behind it. Okay. All right, so now we are all assembled. Quick break check. Okay, you know what? We're going to do an initial terminal. Why not? Just for giggles. And that would also allow us to oil, so we don't have any of that. So we'll go ahead and radio up that we need a full service reduction. And then they're going to go ahead and plop 20 pounds of pressure on. Okay, looks like we're good. Let's go ahead and oil this up. Hopefully no leakage on the line. Brakes look good. Brakes look good. Some of these cars are not too bad with oil, so that's actually good. And we're looking to see how the brake uh, shoe actually is on the, the wheel here. So everything looking fine. This one was lower. Not to the point of having a hot box on the road, but still that could have been uh, worse for wear. Everything's looking good. That looks good. That looks good. Go ahead, get this all taken care of. That looks good. Get all the oil oil bearings done. Good. No problems with that. That looks fine. I realize this is a computer game, so you're probably like, angry, what are you doing? They automatically do this. Well, if you're going to run this railroad really... You have to make sure it actually is doing what they say it's doing. And this is what you have to do. All right, so everything is getting oiled. Brakes look good. Car condition should be fine once we have all these bearings oiled. And that one would have been a hot box if we had gone down the track, so that's very good that we checked it. That would have been bad. All righty. So that looks good. Of course, the engine's new. All right, everything looks good. Go ahead and get the signal. Okay, so they're going to go ahead and release the brakes. So we're making sure that the piston moves and that the brake shoes are now released. All the couplers are connected. All the air hoses are good. That looks good. Yes, the monotonous task of the brake minute conductor. Making sure everything on your train looks good. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. And yeah, this is looking pretty good. Now, if only we had a caboose for this train, but you know what? We're not going to worry about it today because we need to get this locomotive going to see actually how it works on the railroad. So everything's looking good as far as brakes. All the connections we know are good. So using our magical telepathic powers and teleportation events. And that looks good. No leakage here. Good initial terminal. All right. Back to the locomotive. Let's actually get out of here. Let's see how this puppy runs. All right, with about 1,300 tons behind it. We are on our way. Let's get the uh, markers up for an extra here. So offhand, just kind of look at this as we get on the track. I am kind of disappointed that it, you have to be at the right angle to load the texture on the tender. I guess that's a limitation of the game. And I do wish that the color would automatically change from from what we have set it to for the number. Because that looks like it's just white. So if we change this all to white, then it matches. Which I don't want it to match. I want it to be the gold that we have for everything else. But... Oh well. But yeah, now at least this matches the tender condition and the locomotive condition we have visually at 100%. If we do use the slider here in rail loader for how it actually looks, you see this thing, even when browned a little bit, looks looks pretty decent. Let's go ahead and get the tender down to the same. About 80 some. Yeah, it looks like it's actually been in service a little bit. And meanwhile, this thing is not moving quickly, so we're definitely uh, putting a strain on this train. Let's uh, turn the... the what photo setting? Okay, yeah, this could get brown real quick if, uh, if you decide to set it like so. Although it seems like most of the settings in the top 50%. I guess that's where it's going to be most noticeable anyways. Let's put it to like that 80-some just because. Cause then, yeah, it looks like we've actually been working it a little bit. But we are moving. 18 cars. Now ahead of us, we do have a few switches we have to throw because I've been running this a little bit recently. We also do have a passenger train in our way, so we're going to go around them. And uh, good to go from there. Actually, I'm going to send the passenger out in front of us here. So while you pull up, we're going to go ahead and get the passenger rolling. And then uh, continue to look at our brand new little locomotive. This passenger train should be completely full. Yes. Go, my little pretty. Go to the place. Okay, and that's set to go to Birdtown and stop at the usual spot. So we will be following. Meanwhile, we have a lot of other stuff that's still going on, and we'll see more of it in an upcoming live stream, so don't worry. Let's just uh, let's take a look here at, uh, at this train. So we're coming up to Whittier. Offhand, everything looks good. We're taking the siding because we have the faster train in front of us here. So 
Whittier now has some new houses thanks to one of the new mods. And I mean, overall, I mean, the, the thing is, this thing's not very powerful. It's, I think, definitely more of a passenger princess, at least just offhand, or definitely a shorter freight train. The thing is built kind of beefy, unless, especially if you're just looking from the front. But, uh, you know, we'll see what we can make happen with it. Yeah, everything's going well. Let's go ahead and throw the switch in front of us. And the passenger train should be well out of our way now. And these cars are bound for the iron worm loading, which I, or I think is at the top of the hill. So just for giggles, let's see. Iron ore mine, iron ore loading. Birdtown iron ore, iron mine, iron ore loading. Okay, so this is up at the top of the hill. So you know what? Let let's test it. Let's let's actually run this thing up the hill, and we'll probably just drop off this first couple of cars because we've got how many for the mine? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five of those, and yeah, we'll just kind of see how it goes as we go down the track. But we can at least see how it hauls up the hill. So that'll be a good test. We are keeping the sucker pretty much wide open. I'm g I've got the, the reverser down to 40, and it's wide open, so I am not hopeful that it'll make it far up the hill. But, oh, this is a science experiment, so we shall see what, uh, what happens there. Actually, if we're doing a drop off there, we might want to go the other way to the yard. We can go high volume to the yard. Just to then have us go straight down around that loop. Yeah, that might be the call. Okay. So, again, animation wise, the locomotive looks good. The Wall Street stop here looks good. That looks fine. I do find it interesting how they have the, the white wall on the... Oh, that is a curve that I was not prepared for. So I guess we'll start slowing down a bit. Uh, but we do need to maintain our speed because we're about to go around the 30 curve uh, up here at ELA. So we're going to go ahead and cut the reg a little bit because we're going plenty fast. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of a brake on because I have a feeling this is going to be a sharper curve than I'm anticipating. Ooh. Yeah. All right. Well, we're fine. We'll live. Okay. I just saw we had a sharper curve coming up, so hopefully we don't derail on this bridge. All right. Yeah, firebox textures well. Good. All right. Now we actually have a grade, so we're going to fire wide open again. Animations in the cab look decent like normal. With the headlight switch. Piping looks good. Faster train has made it. We have this hill right here, which is what I'm afraid of. It's like a, probably a... Oh, God. It's much steeper than anything else on this route. So it's probably like a 4 or 5% little short patch to get up here. We are slowing down. So we're going to see if we can make it up the top of this hill. Oh boy.
Okay. Well, this train is not going to make it up here. Which means we're about to start rolling downhill. So, with that said, we're going to use this Y to our advantage. And we're going to drop ourselves in the yard here at Ela. Um, let's put us... Yeah, that track will probably be fine. We're just going to have to roll. Oh, boy. Let's see. Is our ass of a train out? Yes, it is. So... Uh, we know that this can't haul 1,000 or 1,200 tons uphill on the grade up to uh, the ironworks. So we'll just go ahead and back this down. So definitely smaller trains, weaker trains, that sort of thing. Meanwhile, our engine is back out. And put the rear headline on. Not that it's doing anything for us. But uh, let's see how we do braking-wise as we come down through here. Let's go ahead and put five pounds on. It's definitely not my plan on not making it up this hill, but, you know, we at least now know what this locomotive is capable or not capable of. Let's see here. Really should have had a caboose with a conductor on it shoving uh, so we know where the hell we're going. Because I've actually never been on this track. At least I don't think I've been. If I have, I'm completely blanking on it. But, uh... Yeah, brake stand. Let's just see. That model stuff pretty well. Independent, same sort of deal. Uh, throttle, obviously, is throttling. Go ahead and have that face in the correct direction. Oh, that's interesting. It does have the sound kind of tied for how much steam is actually in there. So it doesn't just, uh, you know, auto turn off. So that's actually kind of cool. All right, we are going into the yard at a very fast speed, so we're going to go ahead and put 15 pounds on. And hopefully we'll be able to just put these cars in a good spot, and then we'll have the local sort it out. Going into the yard. Not on the track I was aiming for. But you know what? Uh, sometimes in life you have to... You know what? We're just going to park this uh, about here. Because unfortunately we're going to foul a couple of tracks just because of the length of this train. But... Uh, Shove it back just a little bit more. Oh, that took out all the coupler slack. Oh, it's actually kind of impressive. Okay, we'll put a 20 pound reduction on. And quickly just put a handbrake or two on. Cut this away. Ah. Uh, uh, well, um, that was not planned. At all. But I guess this is where we'll end it. I guess I have to call him the wrecking crew. And a crane. But, uh, yeah. here Here's the new mod. It looks cool. It runs pretty good. And then it does that. So, uh, 
we will see you next time here on the Suffering Southern. I guess the railroad has lived up to its name. We will indeed suffer. So uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs>